sexually assaulted or raped, and it's like, no one has the ability to shut anything down. I mean, it's so wild. And yet, this gets passed off as information, and the anti-abortion extremists who are really influencing politicians on a local level are terrifying. So, Liz, does the strategy of your organization, in a sense, um, assume that the fight for abortion has been lost at the federal level? Yes. And so... Because I don't hear a lot of pro-choice activists saying that. No, and we're one of the few organizations, so here's our model. We make videos, and we have a we have like a live stream every day where we kind of give you the news. And so we get a docket, just to give you information, we get a docket every day, five days a week, of laws proposed and or passed. We have about 130 stories a week of what's happening in the state. Compare that to the media coverage it's getting, it's a business. But, so we make videos, we're talking about it, but I hit the road, I'm on the road four months a year, and our sort of model is this combination of USO tour meets kind of Habitats for Humanity. We bring comedians and musicians out on the road, we do a big show in a town, and then we have a conversation with the activists in that town, sometimes the politicians, and the people who are providing the care. My audience then learns what's happening on a local level, and then they can sign up right there to help really activate on a local level. The individual groups, the swing lefts, the clinicals, and it's been very successful. And then we go to the clinics who a lot of people don't understand, if you are providing abortion care in a state that's hostile to abortion, you can't get basic services a lot of times, like getting your lawn done, getting your fence fixed, getting your roof done, because people won't come and help you do it because you provide abortion. So we go in there and do it. So we roll up our sleeves, we've redone people's gardens, we've rebuilt our fences, we've painted the exam rooms, and then we get the community involved and then they take over. So that is kind of what we do. The comedy in this case is a, is a way to bring people together to talk about what's happening in their city, their town, their state. So just from a, you know, just looking at the story going forward, you know, you have all these laws, state legislators passing these laws that clearly violate the process we made, which will go to the Supreme Court, and, you know, there's a scenario by which John Roberts, you know, trying to be institutionalist, institutionalist, yeah, you know, all those words, the words he talks about, star decisis, and maybe even Kavanaugh himself might actually affirm Roe versus yeah, Wade no, and shoot down whether he would actually vote to overturn Yeah, you've got five. And then that actually strengthens Roe versus Wade. It could. It could. By shooting down these laws that clearly violate. Hey, you know, it's interesting, you know. The reason I'm so adamant about Kavanaugh is that, you know, when he was on the Ninth Circuit, he voted. He wasn't on the Ninth Circuit. He was DC Circuit. DC Circuit. DC Circuit. Yeah. And when he was there and the case came before him of an undocumented minor seeking an abortion, she got to have her abortion, but he wrote this thing. Yeah. saying that she didn't have it. And that's clearly a violation of her, right? And so I feel like he's not there. I just feel like he's not. I think that when we talk about it, we like to talk about Roe being overturned. A lot of things that are happening in states right now that are pretty interesting is there's a lot of states who have really crummy laws on the books that they never got rid of because Roe happened. It's like, oh, now it's Roe, so we, they can't implement the laws like you have to get your husband's permission to have an abortion, or you, there is in no way can you have, can you, a minor, get an abortion before judicial bypass. So these laws are hanging around in a lot of states, and if Roe gets overturned or modified at all, right now I think there's seven states that automatically trigger abortion bans 100% in their states. Other laws that these antiquated laws would go back into effect. So states that have trifectas or a strong governor can get it through,
well, right? So for me to have a strong state government, and especially a strong governor, because 